This presentation of um, APA will focus on APA style and formatting. It's the second of three that we have going on. So general formatting in terms of APA style. Uh, APA requires the use of one inch margins throughout the document. You can adjust your margin setting in the layout section of your Word document. Font, in the past, APA required Times New Roman size 12. However, the updated edition, our seventh edition, now allows us to use a variety of fonts as long as it's consistent throughout the document. Um, the chosen fonts and sizes are listed. We've got Calibri 11 point, Arial 11 point, Lucinda Sands Code 10 point, Times New Roman 12 point, George 11 point, and Computer Modern 10 point. I have to admit, I've been using Times New Roman 12 points since I was in college, which was a while ago. So that is what's most comfortable to me. And to be honest, really, you can the, the fonts will affect your page requirements. So if you're using Arial, you use Arial 11 point, you're going to have to write more to re reach the same page requirement that it would be for Times New Roman 12 point. Now, I don't think you're going to get away with something by using Times New Roman versus Arial because professors are now starting to go to word count versus page length. So you kind of bear that in mind. Um, just make sure it's consistent throughout. Your spacing should be double spaced. Um, there is one exception, and that's with the title page. Between the title and your name, there is going to be an additional double space. And then finally, each new paragraph should have a half inch indention on top of the one inch margins throughout your entire document. Paper formatting. This is your title page. Um, the title pap of your paper is in the upper half of the page, about three to four lines from the top of the page. It's bold, centered, um, it's bold and centered. After the title of the paper, we have the author's names, your names, your affiliation, in this case, University of Incarnate Word, course number, English 2310, instructor, Miss Deirdre Mersh, hello, or Deirdre Mersh, and then the date of when the assignment is due. That's, that's key, not when you wrote it, but when you're supposed to submit it. And it would be either the month day year or the day month year. And then you always include the page number in the header. Now, one key thing is if you change the font from Calibri 11, which is the standard of Word documents when you first open them, it will change the whole font of your paper to whatever you change, say in this instance Times New Roman size 12, but it will not change it in your header. So you do need to make sure once you put in the header that you have to go in and change the font up there, otherwise the font would be inconsistent between your header and the rest of your paper. Also take notice, we talked on the previous slide about how your paper needs to be double spaced, but that there's an, an additional double spacing between the title of the paper and your name. And you can see that on the example here. The text of our paper, it's pretty simple. The title of your paper starting on the second page after your cover page should be bold, centered, and at the top of the page, like in the cover page. Your paper starts on the line directly after the title. It's left aligned and written as double spaced with a five inch indention. References. Our references appear on the new page once our paper is done. However, it comes before tables, figures, and or appendices. Uh, the title should be bold, centered, and at the top of the page, and the title should be references. We want to use hanging indents with references, and we organize them alphabetically by author. There is more detail concerning the references page in the APA Citations References PowerPoint, which is the third one on, on this page. It should be the next one you'll, you'll look at today, if you look at them in order. The abstract. The abstract. The abstract is essentially a brief summary of your paper. It's about 250 words. The title should be bold, centered at the top of the page, and it should be abstract. It should look exactly like the title of your paper would on the page after the abstract. So if you include an abstract, it would be your title page, then the abstract, then your paper, then your references um, in that order. A good abstract is accurate. The entire abstract correctly reflects the purpose and the content of the manuscript. It is non-evaluative. It reports rather than evaluate. 
evaluates. We do not want to add to or comment on what is in the body of the manuscript. You're simply giving me a summary. It is coherent and readable. We want to write in a clear and concise language. We want to use verbs rather than their noun equivalents, and we want to make active rather than passive voice. Susie threw the ball instead of the ball was thrown by Susie. And it is concise. We want to be brief and make each sentence maximally informative, especially the lead sentence. Um, Abstracts are not required for papers that you write in, in, in my class. However, if you want to include them, please, by all means, go ahead and do so. And information from this presentation came from the American Psychological Association, published in 2020. The book is The Concise Guide to APA Style, 7th edition, and here is the source reference.